Okay, so now we want to um, understand what is the uh, computational complexity or the running time and the memory size that uh, this algorithm uh, needs. Okay, so, um, so first of all, uh, what are the important quantities that measure the size of a problem? Uh, one of them is uh, the number of nodes. Uh, number of nodes. So this is, uh, we denote that by n, and in this case we have n equal to 6. And the other is the number of uh, edges, which are the same as the number of constraints. And that we denote by m. What is m? m is the uh, number of edges. The easiest way to count the number of edges is um, in uh, is just to count the number of ones in in the contingency matrix. So um, so that we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So in this case, also m is equal to six. Okay. Um, what is the maximum that m can be? Well, uh, if you fill this matrix completely, uh, you have uh, every possible edge. Then basically, you have um, you have uh, m squared. So, so uh, n m is smaller or equal to n squared. But in fact, it's it can't be as big uh, because this includes edges from each node to itself and a node going back and forth from every edge. So it's more like n squared over 2. Okay, so how much uh, memory does this uh, program need? Um, the memory that the program needs is uh, to needed to hold the uh, matrix. So um, this matrix is uh, um, an n times n matrix. So, uh, so memory uh, requirement is um, n squared. Okay. Um, what about the running time? Well, the running time is a, a little bit more complicated. Um, we have to kind of think how long it takes, how long is the search each time until we find an empty column. Okay. So that, of course, depends on the matrix, but uh, we're going to look um, at um, a worst-case design. Okay, so this is uh, the worst case that we're going to uh, use. And um, what do we get um, when we use this algorithm? It basically is such that in the first time, we have to go down these columns, all the columns, until we find an empty one at the last one. Okay, so we found this one, we erase it, and then we have to um, find the next one, and basically the same story repeats. We go the, here, 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 and here, until we decide that E is um, now the possible one, we erase it, and so on. So each of these searches, um, um, each search... Um, takes um, takes us uh, something like um, n uh, n the first search takes us something like n squared over two. Um, the second search takes us something like n minus one squared over two, and then we have n minus two squared over 2. Okay, so if we want now to sum all of these, that is equal to order of n cubed. Okay, so, um, so basically we found that the running time of the algorithm is n cubed. Uh, n cubed is, you know, not too big a number when n is 6, but suppose that n is a million, 
and then n cubed is a pretty big uh, number. Um, by the way, how do we show that this is order of n cubed? Uh, we basically, if we look at uh, this list that I wrote here, um, up to the, the midpoint of this uh, list, um, the elements are larger than n over 2, right? So we have at least n over 2 uh, items that are larger than n over 2, so we can write it as n over 2 times um, n over 2 squared over 2, and that is equal to n cubed over 16. Okay? So, uh, in the big O notation uh, here, uh, we don't really care about the 16. That 16 just goes away. Um, so, we just get that we have n cubed um, running time. Okay, but um, which is the this graph? What does it what does it represent? So so this graph represents. I mean, this uh, matrix represents uh, the following very simple graph, which uh, is like this. It's uh, A, B, C. D, E, F, but the edges, unfortunately, go in the wrong direction. So, um, the edges go basically like this, okay? So this is, uh, this is exactly what corresponds to this matrix. And uh, what you see is that basically the problem is that um, um, you have uh, the order of the nodes be um, opposite the order of the edges. So the algorithm spends a lot of time each iteration uh, looking for the next class that has no prerequisites. So we would like an algorithm that would uh, be able to deal more elegantly with this and basically not be susceptible to um, the order uh, of the nodes uh, being um, being uh, arbitrary.